All right, thanks, Brandis. Democrats are out with a new map for Illinois. Now, let's make clear this map isn't any good for navigating on a road trip, but it is a road map to political power. Amanda Vinicky is at the State House in Springfield right now and joins us. Uh, Amanda, make sense of this for us. All right, Paris, politicians still need to run for office and then actually win a seat if they want to be a voting member of the Illinois House on the floor just behind me or a state senator just across the dome. But the districts in which they run and the constituents who live in those districts have huge influence on who may win those races. And we now have a glimpse at what those new boundaries of political power that will determine power for the next decade in Illinois look like. Illinois Democrats on Friday evening unveiling their drafts of districts for the Illinois House and Senate. Uh, the Democrats use an etch-a-sketch to be able to draw these lines. These things don't make sense. This is gerrymandering 101. GOP not very happy with the results, but they don't have much of a say because Democrats hold super majorities in both chambers of the General Assembly. So Democrats can and did draw the maps themselves. Republicans say that that is obvious given how many districts pit GOP incumbents against one another and how many district lines dip and curl in order to include more Democratic leaning populations. State Representative Ryan Spain says the process is rigged. The only thing that seems to matter are the home addresses of incumbent politicians so that Democrats can be protected and Republicans can be punished. Now, it's not just the GOP that is complaining. However, you have a bunch of organizations that have been involved in redistricting. So groups like the Better Government Association, Asian Americans Advancing Justice, the Black Chamber of Commerce, the Latino Policy Forum, rejecting these proposed maps. They say that the maps were drawn using outdated, faulty information because the feds haven't yet sent states census data. The decisions by our current lawmakers will disenfranchise tens of thousands of voices for a decade by creating representative maps that do not include them. They say in a statement, how is this equity for Illinois? State Representative Lisa Hernandez chairs the House Redistricting Committee, and she says the criticism is disappointing. We had like over 45 hearings. Do you understand there is a lot of feedback for community? We had um, maps of their own. We had all kinds of presentations. We had, there was a lot of information that came in. Hernandez also says the GOP had an opportunity to give input. It doesn't surprise me what they're saying because they, they're, they're looking for a shot at, you know, something to go their way. Now, community groups are demanding that Governor J.B. Pritzker fulfill his previously and repeated pledges to veto any partisan maps. And the GOP is also putting pressure on the governor. This is a decision that Governor Pritzker has to make. This is a sad day for democracy, but he has a role to play in this. If he allows this process to go forward and signs a map that was made in such a flawed way and in such a partisan way, then he's contributing to this downfall of people's faith in the way that our process works. The governor is in Springfield, but he had no public events. His office releasing a noncommittal statement saying the governor looks forward to reviewing the maps the General Assembly sends to his desk and is also looking forward to hearing input from community members and advocates during the legislative hearings taking place this week. And we have four of those hearings, the first pair of which begins tomorrow afternoon. Paris, back to you. All right, Amanda, just the beginning of a tug of war on that.